instead of writing, you know, a script or something like that, I'm I'm going to just kind of illustrate what, you know, what some chat bubbles might look like. Um, this also might be kind of frustrating for some artists to see. We're going to try generating some speech bubbles too. Um, let's see how this goes. Speech bubble. So at this point, I do want to point out that this is not a very effective way to do it because every time I generate one of these speech bubbles, it's going to be a completely different, um, <laughs> Uh, completely different art style style speech bubble so um, what I can try though anyway is to add another layer and um, we can see if the speech bubble will reference the other speech bubble um, oh, well, I forgot to write it speech bubble and you can see it gives us give us some much cleaner um, know uh, speech bubbles and such so instead I am going to delete this and I do like the size of the speech bubble I don't think we'll be going much bigger than that so why don't we just get away with doing something like this and just kind of come in and start removing any sort of it's interesting too because sometimes with the generated imagery it tries to mimic like bad masking that would be done like this like this trim line here um even though i deleted it from it sometimes you'll see that like in the final images and i think that's actually what's used to like determine baked in generative imagery like so like they can like tell oh this this image is high likeliness of being ai generated it's because of these little frays and edging future like filters and things that will prevent certain like image or like at least image detection uh, by simply coming in and cleaning up the line art. So um, let's take a little closer look at this layer here, see what we got left to clean up. Looks like it's mostly just this little triangle here. All right, cool. So at this point, I'm going to make that a smart object. And now uh, I can come in and let's go ahead and flip that vertically. Not a little bit. It's what's funny is that it kind of matches my existing speech bubble style of putting a thick bordered line on. Um, it's like a shadow drop, basically. Um, and this is a very lazy way to do it, I admit. I'd rather I'd rather see it done and let people express themselves in the stories they want to tell uh, than for there to be no stories at all. Uh, right now there is no there are no stories. Everything that these people are making, especially all these consumers that are generating images, you know, it, it's either a form of art therapy or it's a form of like just fun, like a hobby of generating stuff. But I I personally more subscribe to the idea that. Um, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna make uh, generated images, I, I personally think there should be purpose behind it. Um, but again, some people just do it to be happy. You know what I mean? So I, I really don't, really don't blame anybody. Everyone's motivations are a little bit different. What could be interesting actually here is to have the cat kind of crawling down the uh, tree here, or at least have like a hint of the cat. Um, and I think here makes more sense for an onomatopoeia. Some sort of like crack, cracking sound. Eh, not really liking it too much, honestly. Okay, we'll just we'll just kind of stick to this. Um, I know that whatever we want to do for this cat, though, we want to probably have the speech bowl for the cat be something a little more uh, aggressive. So maybe we can even generate that. It's a little it's a little closer. To what I was imagining, but it pointed the speech bubble in the correct place, so that's fun. Oh, I like that. I like the edging and stuff that's on the, the, the line art there. Yeah, let's go with that first one here, where it's just kind of so broken up in the image that you can't really even tell. I like that. And let's see if I 
do the same prompt. All right, that's pretty impressive. Um, we have the same kind of like broken edges and all that sort of stuff that we were seeing earlier. It does try to put the text that I had next to it <laughs> uh, as a reference, so that's neat. And now that I have some idea of how we can make this all frayed and look good, at least good in my opinion, let's go ahead and try to recreate some of that over here. But look at that. Uh, we're, we're looking pretty good here. Um, we need a little bit, I think, over here just to kind of make this continuous here. That. And if we wanted to, we could add an element of color to it as well to kind of represent. I do this a lot, and I've been told by other comic artists that this is a this is generally something that people don't do for a reason. Um, it's a bit distracting. It is it is just just not exactly the ideal way to um, to represent which characters are talking. At this point, um, though, I'm going to double back to um, Photoshop project here, and the essentially what we can do is uh, apply some diversity to these speech bubbles, but also like actually have an idea of what we want them to say. Um, the idea of making a story without, uh, or like making panels without the story, the uh, is a is a bit of a sin. But I I'll, I'll leave it at this. I'm I'm personally on the side of everyone everyone approaches this stuff differently you could write a full movie or script or a novel or graphic novel write the whole thing up first and then start generating images that's fine but i have a lot more fun doing it where the art partially inspires the story at least partially i have an idea of what i'm going for when i start doing this stuff like i knew that she was going to be interacting with something dark and spooky in the woods i didn't know it was going to be a cheshire cat like that that was entirely based on kind of the prompts that we were getting but um, it's looking really cool we still have this this image right here that we need to kind of you know put in um, I think it works well probably as a mid as a, as a midpoint panel here so we'll go ahead and drop this all the way down because of Photoshop's generative fill especially since this is a very small area that we have to do it in I'm actually going to make this a smart object we're going to edit that smart object, uh, which lets me effectively treat it as its own canvas. And we can now just kind of outpaint the extra little edge that we need. It's so much better than trying to up-res it um, because up actually changes the art completely. Um, may do it in a way that you're 100% happy with, but it does change the art completely. So we got some more trees, oh, sorry, some more leaves and stuff on this side and continuation of the wall. I like this last one because it generated a nice little leaf there. Ooh, generated a nice little leaf there and the, the leaves just look nice and continuous from the, the other context there. So that's, let's go with that on a smart object anyway, is as soon as you hit save, it actually updates your, your project so that um, that is now represented. So there you go. And there's there's some stuff that I you know we could we could make improvements on so like right off the bat, um, but the first thing I want to do is to start to organize this project because it's getting big enough now that I want to make sure that I at least know where everything is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start batch selecting things. So I'm gonna say that this here is effectively um, page two, then. Everything effectively here is page one. Even something as simple as this is going to help you out like a ton later. So there you go. Um, this is where we've gotten with the story so far without any any traditional cleanup except for a little bit of this hat right here. Um, we still need to come in and make this sort of triangular pattern or to ditch that pattern entirely and just keep it green for simplicity's sake for the rest of the story. I try to actually get as far as I can to um, before I start doing continuity and manual cleanup because um, 
a lot of times I will tend to obsessively care too much about some details. So uh, this lets me kind of like compartmentalize my head a bit on what's more important than, than what else like to, or just, just an, a, 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 an order, an order list of priority. Uh, my priority right now is simply to tell the story. It's not to fiddle with every little detail until I'm happy with it. Um, that comes later. <laughs> this is the start of an interaction between two characters that I am super curious to see evolve later on. We have some corrections to do. Um, particularly, we have to redraw the rim of the hat or just give up on the rim of the hat entirely. I, again, I am working to be on character models, so I, I, I definitely want to come back and redraw these rims here. And I'm going to post this onto my Discord so that um, uh, people can like see the progress of what we made today. Um, I'm currently at about four hours into this stream. Uh, I, I was going to play a game, but I'm... I'm getting kind of hungry, so I want to I want to eat something, and um, I, I I I'm excited to keep doing this. Uh, but the chat with Kika's definitely definitely helped me out, and motivated me to keep going. So that's great. Um, I'm I'm excited to be able to um, to meet more folks, uh, especially some of the folks from my Movie Machine Discord. Um, whenever they want to hop in and pop in and say hi, that'd be great. But um, I'm a uh, Overall, I hope folks start submitting characters through my portal down below, and I, I, I really need some tips and suggestions on how better to format and, like, should I have music, or should I have no music, or should, like, I, I'm leaning towards no music simply because of, like, you know, I don't want the VOD taken down, but also because it makes editing a lot easier. Um, I don't have to, like, crop out or worry about my audio or separate audio channels, so that's good. Um, but I think that's about it for today, guys. I'm, I'm super stoked to be able to have a second stream in the can and for that second stream to be my one year anniversary stream. So that's great. Um, for, for genitive imagery anyway. Uh, I, I hope you all check out my website down below. Essentially that entire website is, is a demo of all my comics and the, or sorry, a showcase of all my comics and stuff as well as a demo of the Movie Machine workflow um, in action.